Okay, let's talk about how to make complex fishnets in ZBrush. If I look real close here, this is actually um, a separate uh, piece of geometry that is actually modeled. I can see that it's not exactly uh, near the leg right now, but I'm going to kind of address that. And um, once again, if I hit shading, it's like this. It is a separate subtool. If I go here, subtool, I can see that. Um, so it's a separate subtool that can be edited. And we're going to use Maya to kind of construct that, but you could also use ZBrush. Um, so let's just kind of dive right in and take a look at how this would be accomplished. So the first thing that I want to do, I'm just going to hit uh, Simple Brush, switch out of this, Control N to clear the canvas. And for this example, I'm going to go to Lightbox, grab this character here. And, okay, great. I've got this character. And the technique that I'm going to use only works on an object that does not have subdivisions. So I'm going to go ahead and, and duplicate this. But before I do, uh, well, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and here and go to Duplicate. And then I'm going to take this duplicated model, bring it down to the lowest subdivision level. I'll hide the other one. And I'm going to delete the higher. So now this is all I have on there. Now I have to determine where I want the fishnets. So what I'm going to do, Control Shift, and I'm just going to kind of select like this. And maybe I want Control Shift, select lasso, Control Shift Alt. Maybe I don't want it here. Um, and then Control Shift Alt. Okay, Control Shift Alt. Um, I could see that I could, I could try to spend more time to be a little bit careful, more careful, but, whoa, let's see. There we go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll get rid of this. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, awesome. Um, and maybe here, Control Shift Alt. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, awesome. So now I'm going to go here to Subdual, and I'm going to say um, Split, Split Hidden. Um, okay, great. Now I could just go to this one, and I could say Delete. Okay, great. So now I have this and this. Um, and the topology of this is going to make a difference. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but now I'm going to kind of switch gears and jump into Maya to actually make a single fishnet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Create Polygon Plane. And I'm not going to scale it. I'm going to leave this at one grid unit by one grid unit. And I'm going to just set this to, in the channel box, eight and eight divisions. And then I'm going to select these interfaces, hit Delete. And then I'm going to go into Vertex, and I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. And I think I'm going to use the target weld and just kind of grab this and pull it over, pull this one over. I'm going to do this just on the corners. OK. And if I look at this, now if I look at the geometry, if I go to Vertex Face, um, I, I want to make sure that there's not a line or a, a a vertex in there, in the center there. If there was, I would have to merge those faces, but it looks actually pretty good. So that looks good. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, rotate this 90 degrees. So I'm going to look at this from the top. I'm sorry, not 90 degrees, but 45 degrees, like this. Type in 45. And I'm going to delete the history on this. Edit, delete by type, history. I'm also going to freeze the transformations. Modify, freeze transformations. Now I'm going to make kind of a repeating pattern of this. So to do that, I'm going to go to Edit, um, Duplicate Special Options. And on this, I'm just going to reset the settings. So it's all you know, kind of the same, just kind of the default settings. And I'm going to set this to Instance. Then I'm going to go with this first one selected. This is X, this is Y, and this is Z. So I want to translate one in the Y and hit apply. Perfect. Now I'm going to select the original and I'm going to type in negative one. Notice it's set to instance. You're going to see Y in a second. Okay. Then I'm going to select this one again. 
I'm gonna zero this out. And now I want it to go up and down. So I'm gonna go X, this is X, this is Y, this is Z. So I wanna do one here. And then I'm gonna select this one again and do negative one, apply. Okay, great. So there's kind of the repeating pattern, if you will. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And now what I want, okay, so if I go to back to perspective, I'm gonna turn on my wireframe. Now what I want is I want this one to feel like it's kind of wrapping over this, this one here. So I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna select these two. Notice that when I do that, because it's instanced, I can see that it's affecting those other ones there. That's kind of cool. Then I'll grab these, I'll push this down. You can see how it feels like it's kind of intertwined on that. And because this one is above that, actually, I, I think I'll go like this, just go to edge mode, kind of pull this up and um, grab this one and pull it down. Okay, cool. So now it's kind of wrapped in there a little bit more intricately. And because this is over, I'm gonna send this one under. Notice how it's doing it because we instanced it. This one would come up. And then I'm gonna go on this one, I'm gonna send this one up and this down. Okay, cool. Now I can see that there's kind of an intricate relationship between all of that. Um, and now I could even go like this. I could select all the faces if I want to. Uh, edit mesh, extrude. I give it thickness if I wanted to. I could kind of figure out how thick I want it. And then I, I just kind of want to verify that that looks like it's yeah, kind of all intertwined. Okay, and if I press three on that, I can kind of see what that looks like. And I could get as detailed as I want on this, but I think this actually looks pretty good. I actually want it in one mode. And now I just need to bring a single square over. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. But notice that I have kind of that intricate uh, wrapping. It would be hard to kind of visualize that maybe without those. So now that I have this, I'm gonna go File, Export Selection, and I'm just gonna save this as uh, Fishnet Single. OBJ, and you can see it's OBJ. I'll just say export selection. Okay, great. Now, coming back to ZBrush, so I can minimize Maya. Now, um, I can import a single one. So I'm just going to switch out of this. I'm gonna to go to the simple brush, hit switch, control N to clear the canvas. Now I'm gonna go ahead and import my single fishnet. So if I hit import, here it is, open. And now if I drag it on the canvas and hit edit, there it is. I'm not gonna move it yet. I'm going to go to my subtool and I'm going to append a plane. So now if I come here, plane 3D, and there it is. Now it's important that I don't scale the plane, okay? Because the plane is considered kind of one unit. So what I wanna do is I wanna take this fishnet and I'm gonna rotate it like this. So it's in line with the plane. I can also see that it's facing forward. And I want this fishnet to kind of overlap. So I'm gonna kind of scale this up a little bit. So it's a little bit kind of going past that because that's kind of where I want the overlapping to happen. And so I'm kind of using the plane just for alignment purposes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hide the plane. And that's gonna be considered my single fishnet. And I want that single fishnet to be active. That's what I want to be um, selected. So now um, I'm gonna go back to my character here and I can see here, I'll hide this. Where, if I go to poly F, where these polygons are, that is going to be where the fishnet is going to appear. If I wanted it to be bigger or changed it at all, I could go to geometry and I could go to the um, Z remesher and I could Z remesh it. But I feel like I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it as is. Um, and what I wanna do maybe is go to um, deformation and I'm gonna, whoa, I'm going to inflate this just slightly. Okay, so on this inflate, I might put this at like 
two. Uh, maybe that was a little bit too little. Maybe I'll turn this on so I can kind of see. Um, so if I come down here to deformation, inflate, and on that example, if it was too much, it's because I had that inflate too high. So I'm just going to go another 0.1, and maybe one more, maybe 0 0.1 again, 0 0.1 again. Okay, uh, maybe one more, 0 0.1. Okay, so there I can kind of see uh, that it's over the skin. Okay, awesome. Now that I have that, it's actually really easy from this point forward because as long as I have that subtool selected, I'm going to go to um, geometry. So I'm going to just turn this off here. I'm going to go to geometry and then I'm going to go to modify topology. And in here, I'm going to say micro mesh. Okay. And so you can say, well, what micro mesh do you want? And you can see that because I was dealing with a single fishnet, I can select it. So I'm going to go ahead and select it right here. And it says, hey, you got to put on BPR. I'm just going to say OK. And it also says, draw micro mesh in the render palette. And we'll do that in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. So it looks like it didn't do anything. So I'm going to go to the render, which is the warning that it kind of told us. And I'm going to go down to render properties. I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to say, draw micro mesh. OK, there. Now you can see that it kind of drew our micro mesh. And if I look at this, we can kind of get a hint of it, but it's not exactly what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in the geometry menu over here, I'm going to say convert BPR to geo. Aha, there we go. So now I can see that I converted the BPR uh, to geo. And now I have the fishnet exactly where I want it. And um, now I should be good to go. So I could turn this off. Awesome. I've got this cool fishnetting that is fitting perfectly. Okay. And I could even do this. I could hit divide. And you can see that it smooths it out. And we have it, once again, form fitting perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and render that out with shadows. Yeah, we can see how nice that looks. I'll even zoom in a little bit closer. Okay, excellent. So hopefully that was helpful looking at micro meshes to create fish netting using Maya. Make sure to like and subscribe to see videos like this every week um, in ZBrush, Maya, Blender, Substance Painter, and more.